Yeah, okay, somehow the pen doesn't doesn't pop up. Uh, but yeah, it's all right. Maybe maybe we'll we'll do it without checking okay. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, so yeah, so uh, uh um Okay, so um then let, hello, let me yeah. oh, sorry, I will I will introduce you. So the um the next speaker is uh, Leonid Levitov from MIT, and he will talk about chiral stoner magnetics in direct bands. Okay. Yeah, Go thank ahead. you. Uh, thank, thank you very much for the invitation and for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, and, um, you know, hello, everyone. It's, it's very nice to see you uh, remotely, would be even better in person. Um, and, uh, so the work I wanted to talk about uh, is uh, re something recent. I mean, in in Aaron terminology, it will be it will be DC plus AC, um, and uh, it it's about how um, you know it originated from the interest in uh, magnetism and in graphene bands. But I'll try to you know avoid as much as possible the specifics of. Uh, of graphene um, twisted or non-twisted bilayers, talk about it more generally. Uh, question is uh, how the um, band magnetism described by stoner instability is, is affected by um, uh, Berry curvature in, uh, in, in the band. And, uh, you know, whether Berry curvature in a band has any, uh, any effect on stoner magnetism um, at all and if it if it does what what is it um, the uh, so this page will summarize the main results and then you know the, the um, remainder of the talk will be will be deriving it uh, so the main uh, main thing we find is that if um, if there is a stoner instability leading to band magnetization uh, in the presence of Berry curvature, there is a new interaction arising, uh, which is the interaction between the orbital magnetization, uh, orbital magnetization in the band due to Berry curvature. Uh, yeah, I don't see the pen. Uh, do, do you see my pointer? No, I don't see. It. You do? I, I see. I see that. Okay, I'll 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 try to use it as a proxy for for the pen. Yeah. Anyway, so there is there is this minus m p uh, interaction arising where m is the orbital magnetization due to Berry curvature uh, of the states which are filled by carriers in the band, and and b is a pseudo-magnetic field, uh, which which is proportional to s partial s partial s um, of uh, spin polarized electrons. Uh, and it's non-zero if um, uh, if magnetization is twisting, uh, and uh, then this quantity b is proportional to sine of it is proportional to chirality of that uh, twisting texture, uh, and um, and so, so this interaction uh, is is there, you know, just allowed by symmetry uh, because it looks like you know general basic electromagnetic interaction between uh, magnetic moment and external magnetic field. Um, but we'll, so here both M and B play an unusual role. B is not an external field, it is the intrinsic field arising due to, uh, due to twisting of spin texture, and M, M is the orbital magnetization due to Berry curvature. Uh, there is, and, and this interaction, you know, will derive it, but, but maybe b it, it, right now we can say that uh, the effects it will have can be understood by the cause-effect relations. So, in the, in the usual, uh, in the usual mechanisms, when you have magnetic moment coupled to B, we view B as a cause and M, uh, M as the effect. So, we apply magnetic field, and magnetic field polarizes, uh, polarizes our magnetic moment. Here, it's, it's the reverse of that. Uh, the orbital magnetization is present uh, in in the band with Berry curvature from the start. Uh, 
And then if it's present, it it couples linearly to to that um, to the chirality density, which you know would be is proportional to. Uh, and because of that linear coupling, it tends to induce chirality. I mean, there are other terms in the energy proportional to b squared, and we'll talk about them later. But uh, but this linear coupling will tend to generate chirality, and that, that's that's the main uh, that's the main idea. So the goal is to derive this interaction and then to discuss the uh, the effects of this interaction. And uh, and and th this interaction, as I <clears throat> already mentioned, it's allowed by symmetry. Um, and so it has to be there, you know, uh, just for general reasons. Uh, interestingly, uh, th this is an interaction that you can see between the spin quantity, which is B, and the orbital quantity, which is M, uh, arising without without any spin orbit interaction. So it's an interesting case of a <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> what we can maybe call synthetic spin orbit uh, spin orbit interaction, uh, right? And uh, yeah, so it so this interaction will favor spin textures with non-zero chirality and um, you know, some chiral order that can be either squirmian lettuce or squirmian liquid or something something else. So if, if this interaction is winning over other interactions, it will it will generate some interesting interesting chiral states. And then on the lower right over here is a schematic uh, schematic band structure that uh, you know a very caricature presentation of a uh, of a band of graphene bilayer with a gap induced by transverse fields, similar to what you heard uh, in, in many talks th this week and previous week. Um, and I will be using it just, you know, as a, as a caricature for what we're interested in. So, so we'll, we'll consider the carriers in one of these bands and, uh, and, and their, as their band magnetism and then how very curvature uh, uh, affects that, and and uh, th there will be two phases. There will be a phase which is like a conventional stoner phase when magnetization is uniform, uh, and then uh, also a phase with magnetization twisting, and their competition will you know will depend on uh, the details the details of the interaction. So that that's that's the uh, that's a quick summary. And then now let me just check which time is left here. Yeah, okay, so I, I can I can talk about how this is all derived some links um and uh, and also here is the paper on 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 that on that story that um you can find an archive uh, the work done was ji dong uh, which is a uh, an outstanding uh, outstanding young man finishing P phd next year um right okay so good so let's now uh, let's now maybe dive into into in, in into some details. Uh, so what I want to consider to to derive the chiral interaction is uh, a two band two band model, something like this you know, Dirac uh, Dirac band uh, model for graphene bilayer in one of its one of its valleys, um, and um, you know D is the gap parameter induced by an external uh, electric field perpendicular to the plane. Uh, and um, G has two effects. That first, it creates. I think I had a better picture with G was shown here. This is what G, G is, right? So G has two effects. A, it opens band gap. B, it flattens flattens the bottom uh, of the conduction band and of the valence band, and uh, makes the band uh, very flat. And that. Uh, that makes conditions for stoner instability uh, more favorable, easier easier to fulfill. And indeed, in graphene bilayer, and it, over the past two years, many groups reported uh, reported magnetism, orbital magnetism of the stoner type, with different kinds of uh, several different phases of different polarizations. Uh, and um, yeah, so it seems to be a good system to you know, uh, to 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 to. To, to build upon. Uh, also, it has dairy curvature, so it has, it has we, uh, everything we need. Uh, good. So I'll take that for kinetic energy and then add exchange interaction uh, to it with some um, with some potential U. Um, uh, so here I'm, you know, I am assuming that somehow started with microscopic interaction and then. Uh, was grained, integrated out the uh, irrelevant degrees of freedom, and extracted 
the exchange interaction that uh, that uh, that dominates the the, the 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 magnetism. So this is of course not a mi fully microscopic model, but a simplified simplified model, a toy model. But that, that's what I will be watching. But anyway, so if we want to, if we start with that, then the step one is straightforward, and I, I'm not going to talk about them great detail just we can just do ordinary mean field uh, mean field calculation for uh, stoner magnetism introduce introduce mean field by Hubbard Stratonovich um, and um, I'll look for a subtle point uh, and th that's what we'll do however we'll, we'll allow for polarization spin polarization to have uh, spatial dependence so we're not going to restrict ourselves to uh, to uniform polarization and so in this in this calculation, basically we'll be doing this, what's shown on, on the lower right, we'll be considering uh, you know band um band polarization uh in one of the valleys, another valley, both valleys. For simplicity, it's easier to think about one valley uh, at first and then discuss what happens if we have both valleys. Uh so we'll you know we'll consider will consider sorry my animation yeah now it works uh yeah so th this is the spin polarization transition we'll be interested in uh and plus and minus by the way mark uh, the sign of berry curvature in in the particle band uh, k and k prime and the whole band k and k prime uh they are to each other as they should uh right so uh, yeah, so like I said, we start with the Hamiltonian. The first thing we do is, you know, decouple spin-spin interaction by Herbert Stratonovich, introduce ordering field H, and both uh, H and spin polarization are allowed to vary in space. Um, and uh, the interaction, I mean, uh, there are no require specific requirements on interaction, but just for an example, I'll say that it's some interaction with uh, the uh, with the interaction radius psi. And we'll be we'll be using it later. Uh, so, yeah. So then the strategy, as always, is to do Harbert Stratonovich and then include the ordering field the Zeeman term coupled uh, for spin coupled to ordering field in the single particle Hamiltonian and then integrate out fermions and then we settle point. And I, I'm I'm not going to talk about it in great detail. Uh, there is a paper cited on the lower right that. Um, and that discusses it, and that that's a paper from from the um, DC uh, DC period uh, in Aaron's nomenclature. Uh, maybe one thing that will be useful for 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 what's on the next page is that uh, if I do this decoupling and then take uh, take that uh, H square interaction for the ordering field, uh, it has some non-locality because of because of k dependence of the interaction u and if i expand on k uh namely expand on gradients i can fr from this from this term i can extract spin stiffness uh for my uh for my magnetic problem uh and then that value of spin stiffness will you know, will matter because it will compete with my carval interaction later so let me introduce it here and just say that it's a standard standard procedure that we always use when we when we do uh, do on the mechanism okay good uh, tell me if there are any questions i don't see chat but maybe good uh or maybe not good but whatever uh, it yeah good we're doing okay good so uh, right so then i mean the next thing to do is to integrate out fermions uh, with with a free particle hamiltonian in which in which ordering field h is arbitrary position dependent field uh, then you get this free energy which is which is shown on top and then um and then uh it's written so that there is no preferred spin axis spin quantization axis uh, so it's fully covariant uh and and then Next thing we can do is, uh, you know, um, also standard, maybe you know, a little less standard. It, it, we can we can perform a local spin rotation um, to to align spins with you know with with with, with the z-axis. And when we do that, uh, when we do that from the spin rotation matrix, uh, a spin-dependent uh, 
vector potential is generated. So if you do this, if you do the spin rotation, uh, and uh, then then this free particle Hamiltonian is altered by shifting p by some vector potential, and a a will be spin dependent and proportional to the gradient of rotation uh, rotation angle angle. And so that that uh, so this is uh, this is what uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, so now the ordering field is aligned with uh, z-axis, but but um, but uh, the free particle Hamiltonian couples to uh, couples to um, a vector potential, and this vector potential in general will be non-abelian, so it will depend on yeah, PT. I don't have a pen, but uh, instead of what what here a sigma three, there would be a one sigma one, a two sigma two, a three sigma three, uh, and uh, and that so so in this way it's you know completely general and uh, no approximations made. Um, however, since we assume that uh, that local pictures that will be some uh, some uh, uniform locally uniform spin polarization with orientation slowly varying in space. Uh, it will, um, you know, we, we will, we can make a, you know, a, a diabetic approximation ignoring, uh, ignoring the components in that vector potential that couple uh, upspin and downspin, downspin bands, and if if that, uh, th th that's possible if the diabetic condition is fulfilled, if, if our spin, spin polarization is varying sufficiently slowly. Uh, and that's a condition for that. And you know, if we do that, uh, then our um, uh, our vector potential becomes a billion, uh, or approximately a billion. So we're going to work on this approximation, uh, and um, uh, then, yeah, then we can take uh, take the magnetic field corresponding to that potential. It's it's curl. And and discover that uh, that, uh, that 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 curl is actually equal uh, to the spin chirality density that uh, that we introduced earlier, s partial s partial s. It it is also equal to the topological density. If you I mean if you think about spin uh, spin defining and mapping of a two dimensional plane onto a unit sphere, then the degree of that mapping would be an integral of that quantity scaled by scaled by two divided by two pi. Um, and it will give a number of uh, turns, a number of wrappings. Uh, the spin configuration you know, make, makes of the of the unit sphere, uh, and so so in this way, the vector potential that we generated in this way by spin rotation uh, can be related to a magnetic field and b uh, the topological density associated with uh, with with chirality. Okay, so far so good, and. Um, and so then, I mean, next thing we maybe before we proceed, let, let, let me just you know mention a bit of history. So, so these uh, these ideas that uh, out of electron electron interactions uh, in in the magnetic systems, uh, an interaction, an emergent gauge field can arise that corresponds to spin twisting. Uh, they, of course. Uh, not not new, and they've been popular, very popular in the early days of high temperature superconductivity, and start all started with uh, with um, the Anderson idea of RB, RBB uh, correlated states and coup rates, and then that was reinterpreted as a gauge field in in a series in a series of papers, and uh, some elements of what I will be talking about are similar to what to what these papers did. Uh, however, the mechanism they considered didn't involve Berry curvature, and so the outcome uh, the outcome was quite different from what uh, from what I will be discussing. However, on, on some on a formal level there are some similarities, especially with this paper by Herbert Schultz uh, 1990. Um, and then yeah and and then uh, maybe Going further in history, uh, then later, about ten years later, uh, maybe fifteen years later, uh, people uh, there was a revived interest in this topic of emergent gauge field in connection to uh, non-collinear uh, 
in, 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 in connection to how conduction electrons uh, behave in the presence of a non-collinear background magnetization. Uh, and there have been many examples found out where, where non-collinear magnetization uh, induces a gauge field uh, arising because the electron spin uh, wants to track local spin. And if local spin uh, due to magnetic, you know, non-collinear magnetic order is is twisting, then the electron spin will also be twisting, and that will generate uh, that will generate Berry curvature, and the Berry curvature uh, will impact the dynamics of electrons in the same way as some pseudo-magnetic field applied to them, and this will give rise to uh, to, uh, to, to to an interesting contribution to the to the to the Hall effect, known as the logical Hall effect, um, and um, if uh, if if that uh, if the spin texture has chirality, that would uh, that would give rise to to scrumions, to Landau levels. All of that, uh, all of that has been uh, has been in the literature in connection to spin textures arising in magnetic materials and how uh, how conduction electrons see them. And there is a nice review cited here at the bottom by Nagaosa and Kapura um, of 2016, but I mean, this literature is very, very large. A anyway, so, so, so some of these ideas have appeared in some form, I mean, the connection uh, to Berry curvature, I think, is new, and actually Berry curvature is what uh, generates chiral interaction that allows to somehow uh, realize, realize some of the, uh, some of the uh, ideas that were put forward in in this Sorry, movie. Leonid, there it is was, one yeah. question in the chat. Uh, it's uh, they ask whether uh, the field is homogeneous in space. Oh, B uh, is B. proportional. Yeah. yeah, the field B, the magnetic field, is proportional to S partial S partial S. So whatever, whatever spin density will do, B will re replicate that. So it may may be homogeneous or may, may not be homogeneous. I will tend to assume. I mean, using this a diabetic condition, uh, I will tend to assume that uh, the spin magnetization uh, varies, but very slowly. So everywhere locally, one can uh, one can make a, 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 an approximation of a nearly uniform uh, nearly uniform spin density and therefore nearly uniform magnetic uh, the magnetic field but no special assumptions otherwise we'll, we'll get to that i mean when we'll do actually in, in, in next page we'll get to that uh, good so so now that we derived the effective action i mean this is our effective action uh, the trace log term is what happens if we integrate integrate over fermions, uh, and then and then this term on on the left on the right is the spin stiffness term that uh, arising in a standard uh, in a standard manner when you treat stone instability. Uh, so it's partial s squared, um, and um, and then now we can take that and ask uh, and you know try to look for settle point. Before we look for settle point, let's uh, let's um, you know let's assume that even if the spin dependent vector potential is there and non zero and chirality is there and non zero, it's weak. So it you know it's slowly slowly twisting state. So I'm so I'm allowed then to do some Ginzburg Landau expansion and powers in powers of A. Now, if I do expansion powers of A because of gauge invariance, so I'm only going to get uh, terms proportional to gradients of A. Um, and um, and uh, so that these, if one carries out this expansion, uh, the important thing is that there are terms which are first order, uh, first order in uh, in in B, uh, the vector and also in A. Uh, they are they are allowed by symmetry, and they are what you know what you get if you if you do the expansion and uh, at at linear order in A. The term proportional to curl of a uh, first power of curl of a uh, comes out multiplied by 
multiplied by Berry curvature. Uh, and then also, you know, uh, sorry, um, and also, uh, you know, term second order and B comes out and probably term of high order and B, but if I'm, if I'm thinking about, uh, if I'm thinking about um, um, small, small A expansion, I think we can limit ourselves to, to, what, to what you see here. Uh, and um, yeah, and so the zero order term is the ordinary stoner, uh, stoner uh, carrier carrier energy which is written here the kinetic energy in, in the spin split dense type plus plus interaction term that uh, described energy cost for uh energy gain for polarization um and then these two terms are the interesting ones so delta m is the orbital magnetization of carriers uh with up spin minus Orbital magnetization of carriers with with downspin, uh, and um, and then this and it's it's multiplied by b the uh, b the uh, chiral of density. Uh, the the diamagnetic energy is simply the Landau diamagnetism in that in that pseudo magnetic field. So chi chi is simply equal to uh, to Landau diamagnetic susceptibility, it's a positive number that depends on uh, depends on band, band dispersion. Um, all right, and good. So, and you know, th this is a you know, th th this is a uh, th this is the final answer for that uh, for that chiral interaction. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, so let let me maybe emphasize again. So the interesting thing about this interaction is that it's an interaction between orbital orbital degree of freedom due to due to orbital magnetization in uh, in 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 the band of Berry curvature and uh, uh, spin degrees of freedom that uh, go in the in the chirality density, uh, and it, it's arising without spin orbit interaction. Another interesting features of this. Uh, interaction is, is that it is SU two invariant, so it is very different from uh, from um, ordinary spin orbit interaction. If you imagine spin orbit interaction, let's say in an, in an atom, uh, then th that would look like L dot S, where L is orbital uh, orbital momentum and S is spin momentum. And now, if I perform spin rotation, uh, that can only be invariant if simultaneously with <clears throat> spin rotation, I perform rotation of the orbital momentum. So I have, have to perform uh, rotation in real space and in spin space uh, by along about the same axis by the same angle. Otherwise, the interaction won't be invariant. Uh, and that's what we usually, that's how we usually think about spin orbit interaction because it locks, locks spin variables and orbital variables. Here, however, uh, th this interaction is SU2 invariant under rotation in spin space with no, uh, no, um, with nothing happening to orbital degrees of freedom. So, so it's SU2 invariant uh, alone without, without orbital degree of freedom, as it should be because there is no spin orbit interaction in a Miltonian to start with, right? Okay, good. So, uh, so that's, that's more or less uh, the, uh, the the essence of it, and then we can talk about um, about the instability towards chiral order. Uh, the uh, <coughs> so to understand the instability, you have to consider the competition be between all these spin, spin dependent terms that we derived: the stiffness part and the and the orbital and, and the chiral interaction part and the magnetic part. Uh, so this analysis. Can be carried out um, in a in a fairly straightforward way using some knowledge of what or what we know what we know from a literature on instantons. We can actually try and relate relate the spin stiffness energy to uh, to chirality uh, to chirality interaction uh, using some standard identities from uh, from Skirmian literature, I think they are known, known the equations, sorry, 
as a trico take of a completion completion square. Uh, so basically, the way it works is that uh, you can uh, you can take a square of gradient of s plus or minus with s partial uh, with s cross partial s. Uh, square it and discover that you know exact after you open up a square the uh, partial square term generates uh, generates this and uh, the s partial s square also generates the same same term of the same uh, form and therefore one half one half disappears uh, but the cro the cross term of, of these two terms generates the topological density and then from that uh, from that you can Infer two things. First of all, you can infer uh, infer that the spin stiffness uh, spin stiffness uh, energy is always greater than the absolute value of the uh, of the topological spin density absolute value, uh, and um, and also that greater or equal. And then also that uh, the energy is at its lowest when sorry. The energy is at its lowest when uh, when th this is not greater or equal, but equal equal sign. And uh, so, if you take spin configuration, uh, spin spin texture such that this is an equal sign, and these configurations exist, and one can uh, one can work them out and write and uh, write them explicitly. There, they are the uh, they are well known in the instant on literature. Then, uh, then this. Um, then the stiffness energy basically becomes proportional to b uh, the topological density absolute value right and so then our energy is expressed solely solely through topological density like in this formula in a in the red box uh, and now we can and now we can analyze the instability and uh, so you see that uh, so you see that um, the uh, the chiral interaction say was non-zero b. If there was no uh, term with the, uh, the absolute value, then it, it would it it would want uh, chirality to be non-zero. If um, and then if j the stiffness is sufficiently small, it will win over stiffness energy and will will produce a chiral state. And then the equilibrium value in low you know, Settle point value of B will be found by competition of the terms linear and, B and terms quadratic and B. And as you can see here, there are two solutions: B zero, uh, B equals zero when stiffness is big, or orbital magnetization is small, and B which is non-zero, and that, that that's when stiffness is small, or orbital magnetization is large. Right. So therefore, we expect that there will be two two phases, and th this is the condition for uh, this is the condition for the chiral order to, to win um, and so if you take this take 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 this a step further and actually take the energies of these different you know have to add uh, have to add the energy of a spin polarized phase uh, found by stone analysis uh, get something like this phase diagram where so let me say again what an axis the uh, lower axis is carrier density so it basically tells you how much how many carriers you have in, uh, in one of these conduction bands on the lower right. Uh, the vertical axis is the displacement parameter that, you know, uh, luckily shown here, uh, that's a parameter that open, opens the band gap. Uh, and um, uh, then, I mean, you can do, can do the numbers and you see that, and you find that there are uh, two different ordered phases. One, uh, one is similar to what, uh, you know, everyone analyzed already for, Graphene bilayer and trilayer, uh, in which the organization is uniform, uh, and then there is a new phase arising at lower carrier densities, uh, arising at lower carrier densities, in which magnetization, uh, magnetization um, forms a twisting texture with uh, with some uh, definite chirality. Uh, the transitions here i mean in this calculation the transitions happen to be first order um i i don't think there is anything fundamental about this being first order some of these transitions would be allowed by symmetry to be second order but that doesn't happen because of because of how it works out in the dimensional system um 
another thing to mention is that uh, as as you can see here, you know something interesting going on. The, uh, the this chiral phase when it arises, it actually lowers the threshold for uh, for stone instability. So without chiral, if we wouldn't think about chiral phase, uh, the phase boundary between unpolarized phase and spin polarized phase would be a straight line that runs along the diagonal, and then uh, and then uh, the chiral order pushes the pushes the phase boundary down, meaning that it is easier, easier to reach. You need weaker interaction, you need, you know, high, uh, uh, less stringent conditions to achieve, to achieve stone instability. Th this can be understood in terms of, you know, this linear dependence. I mean, uh, goes back to what in the Russian literature known as larkin Pekin, uh, larkin Pekin effect that if you have a phase transition and then you have some other other field uh, which couples linearly to the order parameter, then that linear coupling A makes transition more accessible and uh, B, uh, B um, turns a second order transition into a first order transition. And then, and then there've been many, many examples worked out in the correlated electron systems in particular in, in the work by uh, Premier Chandra and Pierce Coleman, uh, where who considered considered a very you know, a, a, a very a very interesting uh, analog of that same phenomenon in in uh, electron pneumatic uh, pneumatic phases. But I mean, the general phenomenon is that as soon as you get uh, once you get a linear coupling to some external field, and that external field has its own dynamics, it will it will a uh, a uh, lower the threshold for the instability, and B will, you know, turn turn the transition from second order to to, uh, to first order. Yeah. So so that I think this is more or less all I had to say. Let me just. Oh yeah. Uh, now, if we, uh, I mean, if if we go in that in that uh, chiral audit chiral audit phase and ask what what do you expect to see there, we, I mean. I, I, I think that this is quite well understood. This is uh, this is one of these phase, phases where we uh, where we have skirmions of you know particular chirality, and they uh, you know they as a reminder for everyone, skirmions are uh, topologically protected uh, configurations of twisting magnetization with uh, it, um, with skirmion number being the integral of uh, topological density and topological density is up to a factor of two pi is the same as my view the view the magnetic field and uh, they can form different phases i mean they usually form in various systems where they appear the quantum hole systems and the uh, and the layered magnetic systems they tend to form uh, periodic lattices they form to uh, tend to form skirmian crystals uh, however, and there, there are many, many of these that have been predicted and observed. Uh, however, if quantum fluctuations are strong or thermal fluctuations are strong, then, uh, then uh, we can have a situation where we have a Kermian liquid in which, in which the long range spin order, spin order is lost, but, but Z2 symmetry associated with picking a particular chirality, uh, Takes a definite value, so so it will be you know the skirmian liquid with long range spin order destroyed, but chirality being present will will be an example of the two symmetry breaking. And again, there are many many examples of similar behavior in the literature, including the paper by by Pierce and uh, Premi um, that they just. Cited. Okay, so, so may, maybe maybe let's stop and see if there are any questions before I conclude. Okay, so uh, thanks. Uh, is there first any questions? Thanks, Leonid, uh, for the talk. Uh, are there? Uh, so, are there questions in the room? Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, when you wrote the Hamiltonian first. In the single particle Hamiltonian, there was no spin index. So, is it, so how does this 
how does the elect the single part I mean, is that intentional yeah so the single particle hamiltonian was kinetic energy only it was spin independent what i meant is that it's identical to all spin species so it, let's say in graphene bilayer we have uh, we have um four uh spin components you can call them there is there is an ordinary spin uh spin one half variable uh and there is a valley degree of freedom and they all of them have the same have the same band dispersions so they they would all be described by by that Hamiltonian that I wrote. So if we if we focus on one, let's say on one of these graphene bands and and consider you know the spin polarization in that band, that uh, th that will be the simplest example. But yes, the, uh, the, the, there is no explicit dependence on spin in the original Hamiltonian because there is no spin orbit. And uh... The both val k k k valley and k prime valley has opposite Berry curvature, right? So that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So does that mean like when it uh, form this chiral order, it spontaneously break the valley symmetry, or doesn't have to be? Yes. Yeah, so, so if we have if we have um, if we have magnetic instability in both k and k prime, uh, uh, well, a these magnetic instabilities are at some crude approximation they they decouple because exchange interaction that drives drives the instability is mostly intravalley and not intervalley uh for the reason that k and k prime valley is uh, very far away in k space compared to the size of the so it's a factor of 100 that um, that allows to to treat each valley separately uh, the magnetism of each valley separately from the other valley uh, now if if everything is valley symmetric, then there will be a magnetic state in valley K with one chirality, magnetic state in the valley K prime with an opposite chirality, and then we'll, 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 we'll have a situation when we, uh, when, uh, we have uh, two, two of these states that I talked about occurring, occurring simultaneously, one in K, one in K prime. Uh, however, there is something that breaks valley symmetry uh, and it can be either an external magnetic field or in twisted by layer, let's say in twisted by layer graphene, as I'm sure people people talked repeatedly during these two weeks, uh, that, that happens spontaneously. So you have spontaneous uh, valley symmetry breaking, then magnetism will happen in one valley, but not not in the other valley. And then, uh, then that, that will pick the sign of chirality. Am I answering the right question? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's sorry. Yeah. Thanks. Good. Uh, thank you, Leonid. Very nice talk. Uh, I have a question about the uh, uh, fluctuations uh, uh, that could possibly break the spin order. Um, so the term, uh, the spin orbit term that you consider is basically quadratic in momentum and cubic in spin that breaks time reversal symmetry, and if uh fluctuations are strong what kind of gauge dynamics uh, would you expect so for example if in 2d magnets if one considers in some sometimes if one considers a chirality term in the hamiltonian that can break uh, uh time reversal leading to mm -hmm. some uh, chiral spin liquid they having and coffee in... i think they're having coffee uh sorry yeah, uh, with U1 emergent gauge field, I think you mentioned uh, Wigman Kalmer paper mm -hmm, mm -hmm. deals with a similar situation. Now, in your case, what kind of gauge dynamics and what kind of uh, field theory would you expect? Uh, too too early to tell. I mean, this is something we're working on. I mean, I I I, I think it will probably be similar, more like what uh, Nagaosa and Lee uh talked about but maybe too early to tell i i, I don't i don't think to get it i don't want to get into that other questions in the room uh there is a, a question in the uh in the chat uh they ask in the term m times b why m is the very curvature orbital magnetization 
they ask whether it is derived, whether it is derived. Oh, it is totally derived. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, we, uh, so if you look in that paper that I cited, uh, it, it is derived there. And you can also argue by, by, by symmetry that if you have, if you have magnetic, if you have magnetic moment, of some or orbital magnetic moment of some or any any magnetic moment of some kind, and if you have some magnetic field, pseudo magnetic or real magnetic that couples to this magnetic field, then then the coupling should be of minus mb mb form. So that, that much you can you can anticipate just you know based on uh, general grounds on symmetry. But yeah, we went through all the details of the der derivation, and it's pretty pretty straightforward. I mean, what I talked about is the less straightforward part, and then if you, if you actually, then consider consider uh, consider the magnetic field, consider Dirac electrons in the presence of the zero magnetic field, and um, then then you you can you can derive a the orbital magnetization and b that this orbital magnetization. Uh, which, by the way, is exactly of the, for, of the standard form that uh, Chin uh, Chin Niu uh, did, uh, you know in, introduced first um, some fifteen years ago, and you know we we agree we agree with them with them completely. So that orbital mechanization, uh, which is simply the uh, the Berry curvature of all, all the field states integrated over uh, that gives the magnetic moment that couples to m magnetic field in the way I talked about. Yeah, so it, it's it's derived. It, it's it's in the paper. Okay, so thank you. I think there are no more questions. So we thanks Leonid again. And so now we go for the coffee break and we are back at uh, 4.15.